Hi, my name is Michael Sipos and I'm the UF IFAS Extension Florida Sea Grant Agent in Collier County. And today I'm going to show you how to fillet a fish called the gag grouper. So this fish is very popular both recreationally and commercially and it's one of the more valuable fish in, uh, in terms of fisheries. So I'm going to show you how to fillet the fish as well as harvest the collars and the cheeks and give you some life history characteristics throughout the way to help you identify this fish as well as a little, know a little bit more about it. So I am going to go ahead and move the camera so you can get a better look at my hands and what I'm doing and uh, let's get started. So here you have it. This is our beautiful gag grouper here. I shot it recently on a shipwreck. And to give you an idea for scale, this fish is about 27 inches long and about 9.9 .9 pounds. So um, yeah, let's get started. So I already made this incision going from the head all the way down to the tail. A, 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 you, a lot of people will cut sort of diagonally from the pectoral fin and they'll miss out on a lot of this head meat. So the way you get started is a lot of times uh, to, to find that division in half is to start at the dorsal fin and then work your way up towards the head and then work your way down towards the tail. So you just cut maybe a quarter inch to a half inch, really just depending, uh, just, just a surface cut. And then next we're gonna start over here uh, by the perculum, which is the gill plate. Sort of feel around, feel where that soft meat is. Put your knife tip down and start cutting towards the top of the head. So the scientific name for gag grouper is Mictura perca microlepis. And that translates in Greek actually to nose perch small scale and the name for gag really just depends on where you're at in Florida or where you're at in the United States. So this fish uh, occurs <laughs> a lot of the times they say from Massachusetts down to Brazil but more commonly from North Carolina, the Carolina areas to the Yucatan Peninsula area throughout the Gulf. So the more south you go, the more chances you'll run into its cousin, the black grouper, which is easily mis misidentified as the gag grouper. If you have them right next to each other, it's night and day. But um, they have different characteristics. Um, the gag grouper has actually, I'll show you on camera here. I could put it over the, the, uh, the, the shot. So they have a little bit of a white tip on their anal fin right there. Their caudal fin's a little bit different. Their patterning is a little bit different than the gag group or the black grouper, although very similar. Um, but also they have a preoperculum sort of area that's a little bit more serrated so the the black grouper is smoother while this you can see these like little little bumps so I'll, I'll, I'll put a video or a picture in there for you to see um, but in some areas they actually call gag grouper black grouper and that's often the areas that they don't really have those black grouper which is the material perca um, fun uh, Bonacy. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so the, the reason that they call these groupers sometimes black grouper is the large males will have these dark bellies um, and they call those charcoal bellies or rusty bellies sometimes as well. But in areas where these black grouper and gag grouper occur, occur you know, there, there, there's that distinction. But in areas of overlap, um, you know, if you're in the Tampa area, sometimes they call black grouper um, true black grouper or carbos, while gag grouper, they'll just call them gags. Uh, I've been up to North Carolina and they actually called gag grouper just grouper because <laughs> they're, uh, they're the more abundant species in that area. Yeah, and then they called the other species like scamp grouper, just scamp. So just depending where you're at, common names are you know often just based on the, the, the community. So I took this fillet off and I'll go over more of the steps on the other side, but I took it clean off. You can see the, I skimmed the backbone with the tip of the knife just a little bit and clean off. So let's go ahead and do the other side of the fish before we take off the skin. So let's go ahead and make this incision like I did on the other side from the dorsal fin up so you can get the most out of that head meat that a lot of people skip. So I made that incision, just the tip of my knife going, running down the outline of the fish. 
feel for that soft area and outline it. So these fish like a lot of serranids. So the family of grouper is serranidae. And um, you know, people often talk about gag grouper in combination with red grouper because they're both grouper species that you'll run into offshore uh, pretty commonly. But red grouper are actually in the genus Epinephalus, while gags are in Micteroperca. So there's distinctions between those two genuses. Uh, the red grouper are more sort of ventral, dorsal, uh, stretched out, while these are more of a compressed kind of fish. And they have different life history characteristics. The larger gags uh, will migrate offshore, but they, they, they sort of use the inshore environments like grass flats, mangroves, bridges, oyster beds as a habitat as juveniles and then migrate offshore. Well, the red grouper is more of a, a sort of a coastal species. You won't really catch them too much underneath the mangrove. But these fish, the gag grouper, will eat crustaceans, but they, they eat a lot of fish as well. While the red grouper are primary crustacean eaters, <laughs> invertebrate and crustacean eaters as juveniles, and their diet slowly shifts over as adults to more fish. So the world record gag was actually caught in Destin, Florida, and that was 80 pounds, 6 ounces. So that was a big fish. Um, you know, gags just throughout Florida will be different sizes. In our area, a common gag is between 10 to 20 pounds. If you go to Canaveral or other places on the East Coast, you might run into a gag that's about 30 pounds. And the panhandle grows them big, but uh, they also don't really have a, a high occurrence of catching um, black grouper which are those Micteroperca bonassi or bonsia. <laughs> Jeez, I can't even pronounce it. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, so I have this filet right here and before I move along, I'm gonna show you how to skin it. So you're gonna start down here and sort of make an incision before you cut all the way through. So the skin's gonna provide a little bit of resistance for you to not cut through that. And then you're gonna turn your knife and then hover your blade, um, you know, a couple millimeters above that skin and do a pulling and sawing motion with your hands. These fish can live, I've seen two reports, one saying 16 years old, one saying about 30 years old. So between 16 to 30 years old, um, the females will be sexually mature around five to six years. And like I said, they're protogenous hermaphrodites, meaning they're females first and then they turn into males. Once they reach a certain size, or usually it's based on um, sort of social construct. If the population needs more males, there's a higher uh, conversion rate of those females to turn into a male. Um, but that usually occurs for males around uh, about eight years and 39 inches females are sexually mature five to six years at about 26 to 30 inches so um, if anything if there's a deficit out there it's of males not females because um, older fish are targeted and more uh, likely to get harvested so this is your filet it is nice and clean and we will put it off to the side as we clean the other one and then go over to the collars and the cheeks of the fish. So I got this filet, like I said, I am going to move it to the edge of my table. Sometimes it's easier to do so, so this handle of your knife isn't really competing with that, like getting flush with the skin. So I am gonna cut over here, do that sawing, pulling motion I've been talking about. A sharp knife definitely helps, so if you have a knife sharpener, go ahead and run it through it. That filet is done. And you saw me cut a little bit earlier. What does that mean? So I, I am cutting out the Y bone or the, the ribs. So you can flip your filet over and sort of feel where these bones, if you have any, which you're gonna have this Y bone, where it's gonna be. So it's sort of midline of the fish and you're gonna find it and then make an incision about, you know, a half, a, half an inch above and a half inch below. 
and you're going to go maybe about five inches or so, just depending on the size of your fish, to cut out those Y bones. And sometimes you'll get some of these bones around like that that stomach rib area, so you can see like the stomach lining or the the internal lining of the fish. So you can cut that off. And there is your. And then put that to the side and get to showing you how to get let's let's do the cheeks first so the cheeks you can sort of feel around in that gill play area that it's not just hard like here if, you, if you're on the first part of the operculum it's soft so you're going to outline where you can feel the soft you're going to need that sharp knife to make that incision around here and it sort of sits within a cup the bone provides like a cup so if you could think of that you you want to sort of have your tip down deep while using the flex of your knife to go around there. So then it just flaps over like that. You can see that, that cheek meat, it's really nice and tender. It's a different kind of consistency that a lot of people really enjoy. And then you're going to make an incision here. And sometimes the, the skin around the face is a little bit more tougher. You, if you have to think about it, these fish are eating with their face, so they're 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 eating a lot of sharp things. So it's uh yeah, like I said, a little tougher. And you make a little incision going this way, not all the way through that skin, and you use your finger to peel the cheek from the skin. And that is a delicious little nugget. So we're going to do the other side and then we're going to move over to the grouper collars. So I, I was talking about some of the habitats that these things live in. So they're really common offshore, um, you know, not so much the deep, deep water grouper. Uh, you might catch them in like 200, 300 feet max, um, but they're, they're common inshore too. So I've caught keeper gag throughout, uh, you know, inshore waters from bridges to underneath mangroves. And because of that, uh, the, the, the juvenile groupers uh, sometimes inhabit grass flats living on some of those barrel sponges and just that karst limestoney bottom where they have caves and all sorts of good places to hide. So they call them grass grouper sometimes if you hear that term. So that's another cheek. So this is a portion where the, the collar is a throat area that a lot of people don't really harvest. So I'm going to show you how to do so. Look inside that fish, um, inside the gill plate, you're going to see this like this bone right here. It's sort of floating. So you're going to go underneath it, up, th up on the other side of that bone, and then down to, to pop that out. And cut down. And cut along the inside and you can leave this as sort of like an individual wing sometimes people will just do one portion other times people will leave them connected all you have to do is sort of trim up the fins and you can throw that directly on a pan or you can fry that up um, consistency than the filet but it's equally as tasty and you know if you're into seafood and want to try something different that's definitely different and um, sometimes fish houses will sell them for a little bit cheaper but uh, this helps you get the most out of your fish. So you can feed more people and less goes to waste. Okay. So this is what they call the grouper collar or the throats. And like you see here, that's actually the heart right there. If you want to know what a grouper heart looks like, move that out of the way. Clean it up. You could just cut it down the middle to make it a little bit more flat. And that is a fully filleted grouper. So there's little, little waste on this thing. And if you want to get extra fancy, you can make a stock out of the head or the bones and make some fish head soup. And... See you next time, guys. Thanks so much for watching.